Hey there, welcome to day 1,679 of What You Up To Now. Sharon Hornhouse, I'm here documenting primarily my business journey as I transitioned originally in 2017 from the brick and mortar corporate world of businesses to the online world of business. I got divorced and wanted to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, what was something new and interesting and exciting to me, something I'd always been curious about but never really had the opportunity when I was busy raising my family uh, the internet was just becoming a thing as I was in my corporate career and so I never really had much chance of, of figuring it out or learning about it. I was ingrained in my corporate career and I was ingrained in the different businesses that I was running. So following my divorce and of course the divestiture of all of our mutual assets, I had the opportunity to say what do I want to do, what am I interested in, what, what's next for me and I decided I was going to hop in and explore the online world. And like so many others before me, I didn't know it at the time, I got sucked into and pulled into a lot of different paths and a lot of different things. They call it shiny object syndrome, which I'd never heard of in the offline world. Uh, <clears throat> I guess we have it in we have it in corporate America, and we had it in our businesses where you get focused in on one thing and then you get sidetracked by something else that's not really related to your central goals and objectives, but it pulls your attention and your energy into different directions then the direction that you really and that is really right for you and online there's so many things vying for our attention nowadays there's so many things vying for our attention it's easy to get distracted it's easy to get pulled off of our course of what it is that we want to create in the world so I, I fell for the shiny object syndrome and I went down a couple of different tracks and then I realized oh I'm going down these crazy tracks that are really not what I need to do right now and a lot of times when we start something new, we're going down learning roads, right? We're learning new skills, new abilities, new things, new tools and, and things that we don't even need in order to create what it is that we want. It's easy to get sidetracked doing that. I loved going to school and going to college, and so it was hard for me to pick a major. It was hard for me to pick one track and stay on that track to graduate. It took me, you know, quite a few years and three degrees before I finally settled in on this is what I really want in order to give me a solid foundation for the life I want to create. So today for Supersize Your Business, I see I'm scratching myself, uh, <clears throat> our topic and our, our idiom to do with confidence, because we're coinciding with this year's annual challenge, was to have confidence in someone or something. And I shared a, a five question like quiz to, to do a little self-analysis to decide how confident is our behavior? And there were just five little questions that I asked and uh, they're characteristics of someone that is very self-confident and has confidence in themselves. And I said, you know, share one thing that builds and gives you confidence as you're building and growing and supersizing your business so we can learn from one another. Our topic for the annual challenge today was one of my favorites. It's how does confidence interact with all the other areas of the life framework? And this is really a depiction of how it actually works. We like to think <clears throat> confidence and physical well-being have a direct connection, but really confidence has a, an impact and a, an effect and a connection and an interrelationship with every other area and aspect of the life framework, every area of our life, right? Confidence has an relationship with our physical well-being, our mental well-being, our emotional well-being, our spiritual, our financial, our relationships. If you're more confident, you'll make more money generally. If you're more confident, you have better relationships. If you're more confident, you make better choices for your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. If you're more confident, you communicate more effectively and more directly and more clearly with other people. So it impacts every area and aspect of our life. So that's what we were talking about today. And we're looking for, as we go about our day to day, what is showing up? What comes to mind when I think about my physical well-being and confidence? What comes to mind when I think about my spiritual well-being and confidence or my communication and confidence, etc. And we're just taking notes of that and then sharing one thing in the comments below today. So <clears throat> it's a Monday, another awesome Monday. If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, I've got a very full week, busy schedule, uh, but I can always make five minutes for you. Just ask. Pajamagramma at gmail.com via Voxer or direct message me. All right. Have a great day.